our 200. It is Sunday, April 17th. Happy Passover. Happy Easter. Happy Ramadan. Happy Coachella. <laughs> <laughs> if you're there, stay hydrated. Okay, so um, this week we're going to talk about estate planning and long-term care, and we are going to remind you that the midterm exam is open and will remain open until the last day of class, uh, Friday, uh, April 29th. Your uh, quizzes for this last section will also be due on the last day of class, um, quiz and discussion. What else is coming up? Don't forget this final, final interview final paper. Final interview paper is due on the first Wednesday of finals, Wednesday, May 4th. Yes. Um, There's a rubric all set up. Please take advantage of this. Um, you will have serious regrets, regrets if you don't videotape what you're doing because this is you're going to archive the family culture from your grandparents, your parents, from your dog, whoever you interview, you're going to archive that and be able to show it to your great grandchildren. So, yeah. so videotape it. I recently did it with my dad and it was really, really yeah. fun. And he really enjoyed it. And I just walked him through his childhood and asked him a bunch of questions and it was, it was great. So I'm really glad I have those videos of him. Absolutely. All right. Should we go to uh, our weekly let's assignments? Let's go to our weekly right, assignments. Let's go up here. There it is. Hey, you know what? This is the last video. So congratulations guys. And we're coming down here and we have a bunch of reminders down here at the bottom as well. So we see that, see all this stuff's coming up right now. We're going to let the lawyer do all the talking now. Okay. <laughs> it's going to go right here. Okay. So um, the first topic we're talking about is estate planning. And um, what this means is, uh, do you have a will or a trust? Do you have, you know, as part of the estate planning process, usually you'll set up uh, the durable power of attorney for healthcare, the durable power of attorney for financial. Um, and I'm giving you two different points of views. One is from the ABA, the American Bar Association, and one is from the AARP, um, which is a nonprofit um, for the benefit of retired people. And um, I'm a lawyer, so yeah, in a perfect world, you'd have a lawyer draft these documents for you. But I realize that not everybody has access to, um, to cost-effective legal services. So if you have a choice between not having a will, not having a trust, um, and having one that you can do with software or something like that off the internet, just, just get it done. <laughs> uh, if, you, if you can find a lawyer, awesome. If you can't, just figure it out. So anyway. Let's open up the ABA article, the Wilson Trust article from the ABA. And there it goes. All righty. So the first thing that they talk about is what happens if you die without a will. And I read recently something that really made an impression on me. And they said, um, who do you want to decide who gets your stuff? Do you want the government to decide or do you want to decide for yourself? If you die without a will, that means you die intestate. That means that the government... And every state will have laws on the books that say this is who gets your stuff if you die without a will. So if you're married, it might be split between your spouse and your children. If you're not married or you don't have children, it might be split between your parents and your siblings. And, and it kind of goes down the line depending on um, what relatives you have. So that, oops, sorry, <laughs> just did something weird. Yeah, it's all good. Um, so anyway, the question is, do you even know what those laws are in your state? Um, is that what you want? If you set up a will, and a will is usually relatively inexpensive and relatively easy to do, it gives you the ability to name a guardian for your children or your dependents. It gives you the ability to say who gets what, whether it's big, expensive things like your house or your car or um, small things like your personal property. Um, so I am a big fan of having a will or a trust if you have, like I said, children or dependents, minor, minor children that, that need to be taken care of or if you have any sort of assets that will need to pass through a will. When, and what if you have this dopey dope sibling who's nowhere to be found, okay? <laughs> and um, and your, you know, your parents had, had every intention of passing a majority of the state onto you because you did all the caregiving, you did the uh, durable financial, durable um, health, you did everything. And then they die and there's no will on the courts you know, and then send incomes to the dopey dope sibling and they say, okay, I want, I want my half. And you're, and, but like that was not the intent of my parent. Yeah, yeah. Too bad. Sadly, if you don't have a will that's been properly um, executed, signed and witnessed, um, it doesn't matter what the intention was. The court's not going to listen to that. They will just go by the laws that are on the books. So um, it gets complicated. 
Um, we've had people like Prince who died without a will. Aretha Franklin died without a will. Um, it's very, very common for people who are often very wealthy and sometimes even in poor health or at the end of their lives to say, well, I don't want to have to worry about it. Let me tell you, it is a gift to your um, your relatives to have this set up so that they don't have to you know, worry about it and that there's not controversy and fighting as sometimes happens when there's money involved. So um, there were 29 claimants to Prince's will. Um, everyone from a guy who said he sold me his entire catalog of, of songs to people who said I'm his long lost son. He, I don't think he had any children, um, but there were numerous people who came forward and said I'm, I'm Prince's child and they have to go through DNA testing, et cetera. So it's kind of a bummer. So um, a will allows you to decide what's going to happen, what's going to happen to your children, what's going to happen to your property. Um, do you want to give gifts to charity? Um, what's going to happen to your dog, for example? Um, Florida allows you to leave money to your dog. I think that's, you know, cool. <laughs> I'm always hopeful that, that someone in my family will take care of my dog if something happens to me. What does a will not do? A will doesn't pass property that pass outside of um, probate. So probate is the process. You, you Someone with a will dies, you go into court, you open up a court case, it's called probate. And you'll go into probate court and talk to a probate judge and get everything settled. So if you have a bank account that has a uh, payable on death uh, or transfer on death provision and you've named beneficiaries, that will pass outside of your will. If you have a brokerage account or you have a 401k account or you have life insurance, all of these things pass according to beneficiary statements. Now, it's really important as part of the estate planning process to make sure that those beneficiary statements are in place and that they've been updated. If your life has changed and maybe 10 years ago, you would have left all of your funds to your sister, but now you have children and you want to leave your, your, your property to your kids. Um, so you have to all, update, update, update. Yeah. So every, things change. Every, things every five change. years, think about it. Yeah. Um, so yes, you can you can transfer um, many things outside of the probate process. If uh, if you own your house, uh, we always often talk it talk about it as um, joint tenancy with right of survivorship. If one person dies, the other person gets the the whole house. Um, just by showing up to the uh, county recorder's office with a copy of the. Um, death certificate, maybe filling out some paperwork. Am I at the right spot here? So you yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can go down a little bit. Cool, cool, cool. You're going to um, designate an executor of your estate. And again, just like with durable power of attorney for financial, you want this person to be someone who's pretty detail-oriented, who's pretty good with handling money. They're going to have to pay the bills for your estate. They'll have to pay the bills for your uh, funeral. They'll have to pay whatever medical bills or any sort of... Um, outstanding bills were, were happening. Um, and they're not going to be shysters, yeah. right? And so, so they're going to read the will exactly as it is written and do exactly as you intended. Exactly. And, uh, and so uh, you will often say in your will that your estate will cover the cost of the funeral so that doesn't fall on, on your relatives. Um, et cetera. So you want to pick a good executor. And as I always say, as a lawyer, I want, this is my first choice in executor. If that person can't serve, here's my second choice. Here's my third choice. So that if things change and someone else is in poor health or just can't handle the responsibility, number two can step up or number three can step up. Um, you might also say, I don't um, ever want this one person to do it. <laughs> yeah. There's a couple of people in my family. I don't want around my money because <laughs> they're just not really reliable. And that's okay. We all have people in our family that are good at some things and bad at others. And that's fine. Um, it's not uncommon in a will to say, um, uh, I am not giving any money at all to this person. I name them by name and I say, you don't get anything. And that's deliberate. It wasn't a mistake. I didn't forget about you. It, it's not that I didn't know about you. There are some states that have laws like Louisiana that say you can't disinherit your children. So you've got to really pay attention to the state law. Okay. You might want a trust. Uh, I'm going to talk about trusts, and then okay. I'll talk is about it, that. Okay. <laughs> so am I down? Might, am I down? Just stay there. Stay there. Okay. You might want a trust. Um, a trust allows you to avoid probate, and I think this is one of the quiz questions that someone said. Oh, I'm a little, you know, I, I don't understand this process. If you have a will, it goes through probate. You go to court. If you if you um, create a trust then you can put all of your property into the trust and then it's very easy when you die. 
things get transferred really quickly. You don't have to go to court. You don't have to spend money on attorneys. You don't have to wait for the court to have a hearing and make decisions. So trust, um, you pay money up front to a lawyer, anywhere from like a thousand to five thousand dollars, depending on your the complexity of your estate. And then when you die, then there's there's very minimal legal fees at that point to transfer um, title to property. So why would like you that. why would you do a will then? Well, you really need both. And so um, they have what when you when you when you put together a trust, you would have what we call a pour over will that handles everything that hasn't been transferred into the trust. So the big things get transferred into the trust. Our bank accounts are in the name of our trust. Our house is in the name of our trust. Um, and then we have what we call a pour over will that says everything. Else. Like my Academy Award right back there. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Who's going to get that? <laughs> it's very special. OK. When you, um, whether you have a will or a trust, you have to make sure that it is executed or signed properly. The, the court is going to be skeptical if you get involved in a, in a court dispute. Um, the, the, the laws say, hey, we want to make sure that this person signed this voluntarily. They were not under duress. They are who they say they are, that this isn't a fake will, that someone else, you know, faked a signature or something like that. So most often you'll have, um, if you go to an attorney, they'll have someone in their office is a notary public and they will witness your signature. Um, but you also might have um, witnesses that sign as well. So two people, hopefully at least one of them doesn't inherit under the estate. It's even better if they're both just neutral third parties that don't have any financial interest in the estate. And so every state's going to have their own requirements for those people who witness or sign that will. And you want to make sure if you have an older relative who um, is starting to have maybe some early signs of dementia, you might want to take them to a doctor and make sure that they have a recent medical exam that verifies that they are mentally competent to execute a will or execute a trust. You don't have to be super competent. You just have to understand these are the things that I own. These are the people I care about. These are the people I'm giving my stuff to. So it's a pretty low level of competency. You don't, people oftentimes on TV or in the movies say, oh, I'm going to challenge the will. That doesn't go very far. So, okay, you can move down there. Okay. Uh, if you, we talked about jointly owned property, right of survivorship. We already talked about that. Right. So, you know, you can definitely do that. Um, we talked about trust. Um, the person you're leaving your property to is called the beneficiary. Um, when you create the trust, so we own this house, we are the grantor or settler of the trust. That means we are granting our property into the trust. And these are just technical um, terms. But if you're not a very good financial planner or money manager um, and you screw up and don't have the, um, the client's beneficiaries in the, in the paperwork, we had, we had one do this for my mom, um, you know, it's just, it's a mess. It then becomes a mess. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. so this is your being a fiduciary. You know, if yeah. you're if you're going to be money, managing people's monies, make sure you get their beneficiaries up front. Yeah, yeah. And we've been pretty fortunate that the people in our families that have passed away, that we've handled their estates, they've all been really organized, smart people. Um, but you know, it's it's good to kind of make sure if you're the person who's an executor of someone's estate to make sure, okay, do, not only is your will executed properly, but make sure that they have their beneficiary statements um, set up. Okay, keep going down. Um, you might have um, flexibility with trusts. You might um, create a trust. There's a thing called a spendthrift trust. You might have a trust that, that um, releases money to a child when they get to certain milestone birthdays, like 25, 35, whatever. Um, so in my brother's case, it was 45. <laughs> And he's a very sweet brother and we <laughs> like him. So anyway, um, you might have something like an annuity that's part of your retirement program. Now we talked and, about those. And typically with annuities and pensions, you can elect a benefit option that allows your beneficiaries to get money after you die. So when I was um, deciding to take my pension from my prior job, I elected for John who is probably going to live to be 100, yay, um, to get my pension benefits um, in the event that you outlive me, you're going to still get some money from me, and every month you'll think right. about me. And remember that with the annuities, you got to read the fine print. So, so I mean, it's kind of rare, but the old school annuities, they would sign you up for it for a lot of fees, and people didn't read the right fine print, and when they died, guess what happened? The insurance company said, thank you very much, and they took all the money. 
So, um, so you, you just want to make sure that there is, with the annuity, it's clear that um, when you pass that there is a beneficiary and, and what, what all the financial aspects of that is. Yes. So annuities are very attractive for people who are selling them because you typically, if you are the person selling an annuity to someone, you get a pretty decent commission on it. So you might get 1% of the assets that are placed in the annuity. So that's a, a pretty good payday. Um, but, um, you know, it may not be the right thing for the person who is uh potentially buying yeah, it anyway. Yeah, you may not. I mean, when, you know, obviously the stock market's kind of suckle right now, but when the stock market's raging, you're not making the, that, you're not making a bunch of profit with an annuity. You know, it's just kind of set in stone. But know. what people like about it is, especially if you are um, on a fixed income, they like about the fact that with an annuity, there's some certainty of getting a stream of payments out into the future yeah. that will last and, and, and tell you, right, you You talk life so, insurance. So. Okay. okay. So, um, yeah, life yeah. insurance, the key with life insurance, again, revisit it every five years. There are, pay, there are cases that have gone to the Supreme Court and taken many, many years because someone gets a divorce and forgets to update his life insurance beneficiary statement. <laughs> and, then, and then he dies and the ex-wife he hated gets his money and his child that he wanted to get the money doesn't. So um, these, are, these are sad. So, so hopefully um, uh, if you ever are unfortunate enough to have to go through a, a big life upheaval like a divorce, um, you'll, you'll, when you're feeling better, managing a household, as you can see, is a big deal, guys. It's a big deal. So, uh, it's a full-time job unto itself. So. Yes. So anyway, update, right, cool. update your beneficiaries all the way around. If you go through any major life changes, like getting married, getting divorced, having a death, you know, it's going to say hi to AARP. Yeah. Let's all go right. to AARP. Right. So, um, the ABA of course says, go get a lawyer, get the best lawyer you can find, blah, blah, blah. Um, the AARP says, you know what? Um, everybody's putting off getting a will and getting their estate planning done. And we want to encourage people to get it done. So, um, they are giving options for you. If you, um, you can go down, <laughs> they're giving options for you. Um, some of them are free. Some of them are low cost. I think you can go to Costco and get quick and will maker, you know, so there's a lot of different options and they're probably okay. If you have a family where there's a lot of um, conflict and disputes, you might want to go to a lawyer and make sure it's really ironclad. But if, if no one's really going to care who you leave your stuff to, and if, if, it's gonna, if no one's going to challenge it, you're probably okay. Um, so so here's, the, here's the freebies. You can do that right out of the box, have fun with it. And then, you know, as things get more complicated, then you can go to see lawyers. Yeah, absolutely. And it's hard, um, you know, to talk to relatives about this with my mom. I talked to her all the time. She told me what was in her will before she passed away. I knew exactly, you know, who wrote the will, which lawyer she went to see, who was the executor, what was going to happen. And her, her dopey sister kept saying, you got to change the will. You got to yeah. change the will. I went with me. <laughs> it's, it's, finally, finally, her mom said, OK, I change it. But she didn't, which was awesome. Yeah, there were some lied. there were some difficult <laughs> conversations after my mom died for a lot of reasons, but um, but anyway, yeah. So I was lucky that my mom was um, you know totally open to talk about it. Not everybody's that way. I know that my dad has a will. I know that I'm the executor, um, and I know that he's splitting things between his kids and and my stepmom. I haven't asked him too much about it. He doesn't like to talk about it, and and the fact that he even has a will is a miracle. So I'm like, hey, it's all good. Um, but, uh, you know, one of the things you have to remember is, um, if you can gently introduce these conversations to your older relatives, Hey, do you have your affairs in order? Do you need any help getting things organized? Um, do you have a file where all of your important stuff is? It, it, it can be helpful, especially to people who are open to having that discussion. And then these are just some stories, some case studies here. So oh. yeah, they're just talking to people about why don't you have a will? 30% of people 65 and older don't have a will. 40% of people 50 to 64. People say, well, I didn't, I didn't have time. I've been putting it off. A lot of people don't, don't, have, don't have assets yeah, too. I don't we have a lot of assets. I don't have a lot of assets. I need to find a lawyer. It can be hard to find a lawyer. So that's why for those people that are really just, you know, they just don't know what to do. They kind of know that they would like to have a will or a trust. Doing that software, doing one of those online programs is probably fine. Um, so I think um, 
even as a lawyer, I'd like to have everything be perfect all the time. I think AARP is smart to give people no cost and low cost options. All right. So these are just, like I said, case studies, you know, and here, you know, here with COVID, you know, things accelerated very quickly yeah. for people. So, and we, we, um, COVID prompted me to get a lot more organized, to have a notebook with all of our accounts and, and, a wake -up call. and uh, um, just because, you know, people started started passing away and you just think, gosh, what if I get sick and boom, I'm in the hospital and I don't have time to talk to people. So anyway, but we're getting out of COVID. So hopefully that will be easier in the future. So let's look at the discussion. We're talking about long-term care. Um, as you know, long-term care is expensive. The reason it's expensive is that it's a very um, person intensive business. So people who need long-term care, whether it's assisted living or uh, nursing home care, probably need help with what we call activities of daily living. So eating, dressing, bathing, toileting, um, uh, getting up out of bed, transferring, moving around, things like that. Um, and they may also need, uh, if you're in assisted living, you might need help with um, instrumental activities like going to the doctor or um, going grocery shopping, paying your bills, things like that. It could be 50, 60, 70, it could be a hundred thousand dollars a year. And, yeah. uh, and um, it's one of these things that, you know, it's, it's kind of a, uh, you roll the dice a little bit in terms of when you, um, when you, when you decide um, I'm going to get myself a long-term care plan because um, so uh, the, if you do it early on, the cost is reduced, your monthly cost or whatever, whatever is it monthly or an upfront cost, whatever it is, you can, you tell me. Um, but either way, it's reduced because you're young and they know you're going to pay into it for a long time. If I try and go get a long-term care um, insurance um, uh, policy right now at age 66. It would be prohibitively expensive. <laughs> then, uh, yeah, they're going to say, you know they what? Don't want us. No, we're not going to be paying out a hundred grand a year when you're going to be tapping into that in about six years, maybe next year. So I don't we're, know. So. We're counting on our oldest son. <laughs> we're going to be really nice to him in the future. So anyway, um, there's an article from the we National. Got our house. <laughs> there's an yeah, article right. from the National right. Institute on Aging about what is long long term care, explaining right. all the aspects of long term right. care. Um, Check it out. There's a video in there too. Yeah. Right. So someone might need temporary long-term care, like you're in the hospital, you've had a hip replacement, you need to go to a rehab facility just to get you back functioning again for a few weeks or a month, or you might be at the end of life and then, you know, people go into a nursing home and, and don't come out. Because there's a, there is a wake up, wake up call in terms of, um, you know, an un, unanticipated hospitalization and suddenly you, you know, you're disabled for a long time. Medicare is only going to cover, you know, after you've had your hospital stay, it only covers, what, 100 days? 100 days, 100 yeah. days, 100 days, and then guess what? It's out of your it's, pocket, yeah, baby. Yeah. So, so um, who is the typical long-term care stay, uh, patient? Typically older people, you know, as, you're, as you get to be over 70, over 80, um, those are a higher percentage of people who are in long-term care. Women, because women live longer than men, women tend to outlive their spouses, so women may not have dependents who will take care of them. Um, single people, if you are single, sadly, you may not have the support structure. Um, and people who are in poor health um, may be unable to live alone in their homes. And so they may need to go into some sort of assisted living um, facility or even a nursing home. That's why we got to develop these these um, cultural neighborhoods where we all look after each other. In fact, we're going to be doing this. You guys got to go in our blue zone next year. <laughs> we're going to Costa Rica at the end of May. And, and these blue zones are all, all about these communities that support each other. So, you know, if, if you're single and your family passes, you know the community is going to support yeah. you. Yeah, and where I think there's a lot of opportunity in the future is to improve services that will allow people to stay at home. Absolutely. So providing home health care, providing home care, which is unskilled, um, providing uh, technology so that I can know if uh, grandma or grandpa hasn't opened the refrigerator yet today or grandma and grandpa hasn't used the bathroom yet today. You know, with, with this technology, we're going to give people a little more freedom and independence for longer. Um, you know, getting easy grocery delivery. The one thing the pandemic taught us is that you don't have to leave your house. You can get food delivered if you have the money. Um, and the time to do it. So, um, so not just multi-generational housing, but community-based housing where you have all these things that Joe just talked about just at your fingertips in place. You know? Yeah. And, and, you know, it, it would be great. And it could be means-based. It could be whatever. You know, it could be, you know, um, basic level. And then we could have, you know, the Ritz-Carlton level. So. Yeah. The biggest challenge is cost. 
So most people, remember, most people haven't saved very much for retirement. Um, medical expenses go up in retirement. We have no out-of-pocket maximum under Medicare. Uh, drugs are very expensive under Medicare. Uh, Medicare doesn't. <laughs> oh, it's all right. It's the phone. Medicare doesn't cover vision or dental or hearing, so there's all these extra costs. Then you get into talking about long-term care, and let's go into this calculator by Genworth, um, and you'll notice that the cost is very, very high, and it can depend on the uh, part of the country that you're in. You can select, say, monthly costs or annual costs, and then look in different areas. California, Hawaii, New York are gonna be expensive. Um, Louisiana, Texas are maybe half the cost um, for long-term care as uh, California. Um, now you so probably- these are all lists of, as we see here, monthly costs, and, yeah. and they can vary. I mean, and so this is the national cost. So type in, um, type in uh, USC zip code, 90089, see what happens. See if we get something. I didn't like that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's over 100,000 a year in LA. Yeah. Um, and it's about 60,000 a year in Texas and yeah. Louisiana. So, this. yeah, that's it. That's just to look. Uh, How about Laguna Beach? Yeah, Laguna Beach is probably a little pricey. You know, you, you, pay, you pay for what you get for it. Now go down, uh, LA area. So, um, you know, you might have a, we're you're, not, you're, not you're very we're likely not. to have a semi-private room. People don't get private rooms very often in nursing homes. So it's going to be close to $9,000 a month. That and, adds yeah, up pretty, and this home health aid is somebody who's not come spending all day. We had we had a couple next door to us that um, it was you know they they their end of life lasted a couple months. The person was living with them all day, every day, and it was four hundred bucks a day. Yeah. So, so if you're like I said, Hawaii, New York, California, you're going to pay a lot of money. So check care. this out for sure. Check it out, guys. All right. Okay. Cool. And I think that's everything I have. All right. um, if you need to know what your grade's going to be before grades are submitted. Um, you know, for some reason, you know, it doesn't look like we're going to get that pass, no pass option this semester since they haven't announced anything yet. But if for some reason you want us to grade your final paper early, just reach out to me, email me, and um, we'll try to accommodate you. Right. But you shouldn't worry because we all know this is the best class <laughs> at USC, hands down. And, uh, and don't forget extra credit, three right. points to your final grade. Right. So if you've got right. an 87, but you'd like to have an A minus, right. do the extra left, credit, right it'll add three okay. points. Do, 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 do. Um, you can do a PowerPoint, you can do a short paper, you there can do is. a video. If you do the video and you have trouble um, uploading right. it to Blackboard, just uh, upload it to your Google Drive and send me a link. The pandemic still took its toll on all, all of you guys, even those people that are out of Coachella right now. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> it's been a tough semester. I think it's been a tough semester. We're all hitting the wall. We're oh, all really God. tired. Yeah, and, uh, tell your friends. All right. Tell your friends. Take take our class. We teach this every single semester. For you, you, have, you have some buddies like, oh, my God, I'm not going to graduate. Guess what? They can take it over the summer. That's right. right. That's right. right. Very cool, guys. All, All right. Well, it's been a great year. Peace, Bye. love, and right we'll see you next time. Bye now.